The Cone Zone is back. We're Grant and Lowell, and 49ers general manager John Lynch just signed or agreed to a multi-year extension with the 49ers about an hour ago. Dad, what do you think about this? It's very interesting. Let's uh, really slow down and go through this systematically. It's been reported that he's agreed to. Right. Uh, I still get stuff from the Niners, and they, as far as I know, Iggy, they have not sent out a press release saying Correct. he signed. Correct. So it's been reported. I would say there's a 99.9% chance that he either has resigned or will resign probably later today hmm. or soon. But we know it's not over till it's over. Lots of funny things happen. So we're operating on faith that this is going to go through. One point. Uh, second point. When he signs, uh, some of your your uh, readers and listeners could say, you know, Grant, you were saying there were issues between the general manager Lynch and management. And look, he signed. You don't know what you're talking about. And neither does your old man. OK, fine. I just want to tell you how daily journalism works, because Grant is a daily journalist and I was. Things happen on a daily basis. Thank God. And there's always a lot to write about. A daily journalist who is worthwhile writes about the truth he or she knows that day. When John Lynch is not signing and you don't hear from him for two months, that's newsworthy. And you write about that and try to understand it. Eventually, when things change and he signs and he's got a contract, you write that. You keep up with the daily news. We are not uh, fortune tellers. We can't see into the future. We do the best we can. And I hope people understand that. Um, somebody once said, uh, journalism is the first draft of history. Hmm. We write the first draft. Yes. It's for late people later on to uh, be able to see the totality of it. We, we can't do that on a daily basis, but every journalist who's worthwhile does the best he or she can with the available news that day. Now, getting specifically to John Lynch, congratulations. If this is going to happen, congratulations, uh, you know, that the team has recognized what a good job you've done. I mean, you got them to the Super Bowl pretty quick. I find it a little peculiar that he only signed a two-year extension and the coach signed a three-year extension. I don't quite get it, but let's put that aside. Iggy, there was something very weird that that Lynch said on KMBR the other day. Please tell people what it was. Yesterday, he went on KMBR to express how optimistic and hopeful he was that he was going to be getting an extension and he was right, but he said something strange. He said, you know, I I'm not necessarily going to be a lifer in this industry. Okay. Meaning I, uh, the way I take it is I may not be a general manager forever, i.e. I may have other things I want to do. Right. Well, is this what a, te what a team wants to hear? That the general manager is lukewarm about his job? That yeah. he could almost take it or leave it? So it's like a passing fad. I mean, do you think Bill Walsh, would have told anybody, you know, I'm not a lifer in this thing. When he wasn't the coach of the Niners anymore, he used to tell me when he would have a drink or two, they stole my effing team from me. Mm -hmm. They stole my effing team from me. He didn't want to step away. Think Al Davis would have said, this is a passing fancy. I'm not a lifer in this. You think Pete Carroll would right. say that? I don't understand. So what I think is, and again, we don't know what went on between Lynch and the Niners, but I'll tell you right now, something went on. Agree. It's not like everything was peaches and cream. Nope. He was, Lynch was out of, uh, out of contact for a couple of months. I bet he, two months, right, Tweety? Two months. And he said he didn't use his phone for two months. He's a general manager. Yeah. I just called you, Sweetie. I'm sorry. <laughs> I used to do that in the press box and he'd say, don't call me, Sweetie. Okay. I'm not going to call you, Sweetie. Um, he wasn't me four a, times. approachable for two months. Then he comes out with this weird statement about he may not be a lifer. I'm telling you, there was a lot going on behind the scenes there, and it was bitter. And I'll tell you right now, I think he put a lot of pressure on the Niners a day ago when yes. he went on KMBR, and they caved. Well, now, the pressure was he told people on the radio that Jed promised him an extension. 
Yes, and that he wasn't a lifer. Not a lifer. Jed it's promises to me he needs to make this worth my while because I could always go back to yeah. uh, Fox or climb mountains or start a bike shop, whatever. Yeah, or well, start a winery. They all start yeah. wineries these days. So what I'm saying, and I think you agree with me on this one, is – they're going to make it seem like everything. They were in heaven together. They were all holding hands and drinking from goblets. Yeah. No, there was conflict. There was bitterness. They worked it out under pressure from Lynch. And now he got not a three year, but a two year extension. Iggy, when I'm saying, does that sound plausible? Absolutely. What doesn't sound plausible is that Lynch just wandered away from the team put his phone on silent for two months and was completely oblivious to all this speculation. He just left. And then came yeah. back and was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm going to get my extension. And we didn't want Jamal Adams. And wh why did you ask me earlier? I, I could have answered all these questions. Like, no, he, I think he went away to prove a point. You don't think I'm worthwhile? Let's see how you handle this offseason without me. Let's see you explain various things throughout the offseason without me. They couldn't do it. And then no. he comes back on, on radio and says, I think they're going to do the right thing because they promised it to me. And then they did. It seemed like a very clever way to put some pressure on. Stanford. Stanford. Because he, he didn't come out and say, I'm mad. They did, they did me wrong. What he said is, I'm hopeful. They're, they're going to do the right thing because they promised. It's like he spoke he it in into existence. Corner. Put Smart. him in a corner. Put him and in you a know corner. the other thing uh, he had said, he wasn't in, in touch with the he, – he was sort of on vacation because he, quote, you know, they all say, I wanted to spend more time with my family, right? Yeah. Viewers, I got to tell you, whenever someone says, I want to spend more time with my family, it's a lie. Right. It's it's there's about two or three lies. The right. other lie is I take full responsibility. That's always a lie. The other lie is in basketball when a player misses a game for back spasms. He probably didn't have back spasms. <laughs> he didn't have right. Back Not spasms back. is a universal injury that no one ever has, right? That's right. The Warriors used to have back spasms all the time. Uh, you're right. But this one, I want to spend time with my family. Whenever they say that, you know something went on. And my guess is that Jed tried to pull a fast one or came close. He, po he he promised the extension for both Shanahan and Lynch. He came through with one for Shanahan first. Lynch disappeared for a while and had yeah. to really work to get his. And still at the end, only got uh, got one year fewer than Kyle Shanahan. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, he got uh, two thirds. He got a he, he got a, he got a raise and extension. But I think it's clear that the the, the power in that organization has shifted towards the head coach. Okay, uh, I think we can, that's a good discussion. I think we, we could end it there. Uh, a final word, congratulations, John. Both of us like you very much. Continue to do a terrific job. Yeah, and I got one more thing to say about him. Since you retired in 2017, and that's when he started, from my pr perspective, he has made that organization so much easier to do business with. He's like a throwback to the Eddie days. Yeah, and to Carmen's policy. Yes, exactly. Carmen, exactly. you wanted to know something, you called Carmen, he answered the phone. I mean, before them, there was no one you could talk to in that organization. You couldn't talk to Trent Balky about real no. stuff. No, I mean, you, you could, Iggy, you could go out to lunch with, with Carmen Policy. Yeah. Now, since he's retired, he comes over to my house. And I asked John Lynch for a one-on-one -on, -one on Periscope. He had no idea what Periscope was and says, sure, whatever you want.